This is my Nintendo Switch and today I'm going to mod it using an RP2040 Core mod chip. The first step of course to modding any console is disassembly so I'm going to remove all the pentalope and tri wing screws. Once the back plate of the console is removed, we need to remove the SD card daughter board and then also the metal shield which is covering the console's motherboard. And this also is sort of a piece of the heatsink as well. With the metal shield removed, there is more screws to remove the heatsink, which we need to remove to access the CPU or APU, some people need to call it, to install the CPU flex ribbon cable. The switch has a sort of sandwich design. When it comes to thermal paste, there's many layers, so we need to clean up all the thermal paste using some isopropyl alcohol and some Q-tips. Once the thermal paste is all cleaned up, we need to remove the metal shield over the APU to access all the capacitors that we're going to need to solder to. If you're not really that confident with your ability to do this properly, then I recommend using some plastic tools and really taking your time with this. And there you go, the metal shield will pop off, and now there's more thermal paste to clean up. Once again, we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, being very careful around these little components. We don't want to knock any of these off the board or put too much tension on them. With all that cleaned up, we want to grab the CPU flex cable and pre-tin the pads while it's placed away from the motherboard. This is because these points we're going to be using are kind of flowing onto the capacitors on the CPU of the console, so we want to make sure there's some solder there to flow. When placing the CPU flex on the CPU, it's important to note that this is kind of going to go under the shielding. And you can see these two big pads at the bottom. This is ground, but it's also used to just secure the flex in place. Making sure that this flex cable is aligned properly is very important as otherwise we might find that solder just cannot be flowed onto the capacitors as it's too far away from each pad. My method of doing this is kind of pushing down this flex cable with some tweezers, then melting the two anchor points, and then waiting for it to solidify and then removing my tweezers to make sure that it's flush to the board. Having a lot of isopropyl alcohol is very important here as because these points are so small, you can get pieces of flux or fluff completely covering the points that you need to see. So I actually use a lot of isopropyl alcohol, even just in between soldering jobs to make sure I can see the points and make sure that they're soldered correctly. Really, really take your time with these points. They're incredibly small. And if you flow one of these off, then the console's not gonna work. And chances are the repair is gonna be really difficult because you're gonna have to hold these new capacitors with tweezers and apply them and even then it might not work. So very, very much take your time with this. Even if it takes 20 minutes, half an hour, just do not rush this.
The mod chip for the next part kind of serves as a middleman for the EMMC NAND chip. So what we're going to do is remove the NAND chip from the motherboard, plug it into the mod chip, and then plug the mod chip into the original port on the motherboard. We're also going to plug in the CPU flex cable into the mod chip. So, making sure not to turn the console on for too long as there's no thermal paste or heat sinks, we can just quickly test to make sure that it boots up into the PicoFly boot screen. So now it's all booted up, we know the install is all working, we need to cut out a piece of the CPU metal shield so that the flex cable isn't crushed. You can see here I'm kind of cutting it a little bit and then just flattening it down with some tweezers. Once all that's done, it's literally just reassembly. So obviously making sure to place new thermal paste, making sure that there's no old thermal paste on the CPU or any of the heat sinks before applying new paste, making sure not to use too much or too little. The perfect amount is what I show in the video. So try to replicate that as much as you can. Next, the screws for the heatsink need to be screwed in and the metal shield needs to go on. But first, we need to modify it a little bit. To make sure that the metal shield fits properly, we need to cut out a piece for the mod chip. Now make sure that you don't do this too much towards the left, otherwise you're going to interfere with the heatsink and things just might get a little bit too warm when playing games. I found that feeding the mod chip through the kind of fan hole was better, and then laying it where I made the cutout. So once the mod chip fits, it's just the remaining screws for the metal shield and assembling again making sure to put the micro sd daughter board in and then screwing on the back plate i secured my mod chip down with some electrical tape just to make sure it doesn't rattle or come loose while in the console So now all that's left to do is to screw in the micro SD port, plug it in, and then put the plastic back panel on. Now the mod chip is installed, we can see the final result, and you can also see the LED blinking to indicate the glitching through the back panel. That's it for today's video, and that is me installing the PicoFly mod chip. Thanks for watching.